Hey Ron Gober here, a 5 star limited harmony has finally hit Star Rail and she is incredible. Permanent damage percent higher than Bronya's to the whole team. Annihility esque buff which is insanely strong, incredible self damage from a harmony of all things and more all packed into one beautiful unit. She isn't perfect everywhere though and I will be explaining why, but today I'll go through Ron May's kit and how it works since it is a wall of text, all extra mechanics you need to know then her best relics and lycones, including her signature, along with endgame stat goals. I'll talk about her speed, important NG rotations, pros and cons, and synergies and teams. So like and sub if this helped, let me know if you're pulling, and let's begin. Rome is a 5 star limited ice unit following the harmony path, our path dedicated to buffing allies damage, and she does that quite well. At level 80, her base HP is 1086, her base attack is a weirdly high 659 and she has a base defense of 485. She has a base speed of 104 alongside some speed traces and an energy cost of 130. For trace priority you really want to level up everything except basics, prioritizing your skill and ultimate first. So onto abilities. Her basics are nothing important so onto her skill. String sings slow swirls. After using it she will gain overtone for 3 turns decreasing at the start of her turns. When it is up, all allies gain a universal damage percent buff and a 50% weakness break efficiency buff. The damage percent boost is 32% at level 10 and can go up to 68% after unlocking and maxing out her ascension 6 passive. 68% damage to all allies permanently is pretty damn insane, and the weakness break efficiency is amazing too. It means all toughness damage is multiplied by 1.5, meaning you break 1.5 times as fast. This is excellent for break oriented units such as Himiko, Sushang and the new Shuei. We will see though that it might not be as good as you think. Rome's ultimate, Petals to Stream, Repose in Dream, has a cost of 130 NG and will deploy a field for 2 turns, also decreasing at the start of her turns. I will note here that making her super slow to abuse field duration like Huohua and Luwacha has never been worth it, since cycling ultimates is more important. When this field is up, all allies gain a res pen increase and their attacks will apply Thanato Plum Rebloom, which we will just call an ultimate mark. At level 10 this is a 25% res pen buff, which with res pen and reduction being so rare, is most of the time a 25% deepest increase for all allies. Again, this is insane. It's a separate multiplier to your attack, your crit, damage percent and even death shred, so this is amazing for boosting damage. It will also be buffing both base kit damage and any break damage which can't easily be buffed, and this works out perfectly since Ruanmei will be doing a bunch of break damage of her own. This 25% res pen mitigates most enemies innate damage resistance versus non-weak elements, barring some bosses, meaning you are doing as much damage as a matching element DPS would do, or more, minus the breaks. As for the ultimate mark, this is a debuff, and it stays on the enemy permanently until it is activated. When the enemy with said debuff tries to recover from weakness break, they will instead be delayed and receive some break damage from Ruan Mei. The delay is 46% at Ruan Mei's ideal break effect stat line. This break damage is calculated as normal and then multiplied by the ultimate's break damage multiplier. So on these ultimate mark damage procs, you can expect to see 2k to 8k damage when the enemy tries to recover from weakness break. The delay enemies receive skills on her break effect and acts like a freeze delay which means the enemy will take their action, consume a turn of debuffs, and then be delayed. This is massive for dot playstyles, but kind of annoying for debuffers. This means the enemy will take the dot damage, be delayed, and then take it again very soon, rather than taking the dot damage as usual and waiting a whole nother turn. This basically speeds up the dot damage process and makes damage over time less over time. Alongside detonations, you are going to have a lot of damage procs. It will consume a turn of debuffs though, but Rame is skill point positive, allowing for DOT sub DPS like Reniophone or Sampo to easily use their skill and keep DOT uptime at 100%. This delay can also act as a semi sustainability since delayed enemies on top of weakness break is a ton of delay, and if the enemies are not taking action or dead from your massive buffs, well, who needed that healer anyway? Rome's talent, Somatypical Helix, will increase all allies' speed except herself by a percentage, and this is just by having her in the team which is amazing. Then when an ally breaks an enemy's weakness, Rome will do some more ice break damage of her own at a much stronger multiplier than her ultimate marks. You can expect 5k break procs on squishies which should hopefully kill them and up to 20k and higher on bosses. 
My only problem with this is it can actually still kill credit if you kill and break at the same time. This is great for her ult uptime for free 10 energy procs, but not great if you rely on kill energy on your DPS, and not great if you rely on on kill effects like Zealous Resurgence, which won't be activating since Ruanmei's break proc will steal it. Maybe this will be fixed, or maybe this is just a balancing thing. Finally, her technique is a very interesting one. She will gain Silken Serenade and automatically trigger her skill at the start of the next battle without consuming a skill point. For a free skill buff and a free 30 energy, and for your ultimate on the first turn in Memory of Chaos with an energy rope. Then in Simulated Universe, this Silken Serenade basically makes anyone on your team attacking enemies ignore weaknesses, reduce all toughness, and this toughness damage is increased by 100% for each blessing you have. So pretty much, you will just be breaking every toughness bar when you enter with this technique. Then if you do break, every enemy broken receives 100% of Ruanmei's ice break damage, multiplied by your number of blessings. So when you see yourself one-shotting the first stage of the Ebendir boss fight, you now know why. For Traces, her first ascension passive will grant 20% break effect to all allies including herself. Great buff for personal damage and stat requirements, and any break DPS in the team. Her second ascension passive grants her 5 energy at the start of her turn. Nearly every harmony gets an energy trace, and this is mandatory for her rotations. Her final passive is immense, granting an additional 6% damage increase during her skill's full duration for every 10% of break effect she has above 120%. This stacks up to 36% damage. This basically means you want to hit 180% break effect for a total skill buff of 68% damage. If you don't have the subs though, you don't need to sacrifice everything for that final 10% as it's just 6% damage. And she only needs to build 160% break effect anyway due to her first ascension passive. She gains 37.3% break effect, 22.5% defense, and 5 speed in traces, which is pretty much perfect. Onto Eidolons real quick, and the first one is a banger. When her ultimate field is up, at E1, all damage dealt by allies will ignore 20% of the enemy's defense. Ignoring 20% of the enemy's defense is an 11.7% DPS increase to your damage, so to all allies. And this will be buffing their damage, their break damage, and Ruan Mei's own break damage. And this scales if you have additional sources of death ignore or reduction. Another unique buff to add to Ruan Mei's collection. Her E2 gives a 40% attack buff to any ally that hits a weakness broken enemy another unique buff to her assortment of buffs. This ranges from good to great depending on your DPS and how much attack percent they have, and it will be applied before they do damage. Her E4 gives Ruanmei a 3 turn 100% break effect buff when an enemy's weakness is broken, allowing for much lower stat requirements. But since she isn't going to be doing massive basic attack damage anytime soon, this just pumps you up to 280% break effect, where alongside E1 and E3, you'll be doing some substantial break damage. Her E6 makes her ultimate duration last one extra turn for now 3 turns, allowing for a permanent ult up time at a 3 turn rotation. It also increases her break damage multiplier on her talent, and along with all previous Eidolons, you can make Ruan Mei hit for over 100k break damage procs when allies break enemy weaknesses. On to Relics, you'll ideally want the Hackers 4 piece at maximum investment just for that utility. You want a 2 Hacker 2 Thief combo at good investment, and a Thief 4 piece at minimum investment. 2 Hacker 2 Thief is probably the safest bet. For playing ornaments, you'll either want to go Talia for the break effect stats, or Von Wack or Penaconi for the 5% energy and or other utility. If you run a rotation that doesn't need the 5% energy, like a 4 turn rotation, and you have enough break effect in stats, then Kill or Fleet is fine as always. For main stats, opt for HP% or Death% Body, Speed Boots, Death% or HP% Orb, and an energy rope. You won't go break rope, the extra stats in break effect that you can get in subs isn't worth losing out on energy ever. And no, ice damage percent orb will not give her more break damage, it does not scale with damage percent. For an endgame stat goal we want to hit 3.5k HP, 1.2k defense, 160% break effect, and speed is variable to what you want, but you can hit 140 from hacker 2 piece, her traces, and speed boots alone. On the topic of speed, being fast for supports is pretty much always good, and being very slow is just a waste, just like on Hua Hua and Luwacha. Yes, you technically have a longer field duration, but her skill is permanent anyway, and her ult is the only one you could abuse. At 109 speed Rome, which is her standard speed pre-relics, following my Ting Yun sheet, 
your DPS would need 163.5 speed to go three times at the same time she goes twice. You're not doing that without making sacrifices that aren't worth it unless you use Hanya specifically and it's still not worth them. Since you're also using her ult for the DPS's burst rotation, I doubt that additional turn with the 25% res pen on a weak part of their damage is worth a Ruame that needs two cycles to get her ultimate back, and you also lose out a ton of skill points from her for your team. Finally, you'll want to be first if you want to ult before your DPS's first turn on the first turn of Memory of Chaos. If you do want to go slow, the only way you would do so is by abusing Vonwack. It lets you have a better first wave of Memory of Chaos at the sacrifice of your second wave's first turn. Vonwack at 120 speed Ruan Mei means a DPS of at least 130 speed can have 3 turns of her ultimate uptime on the first wave. The way it works is Vonwack will push her ahead of the team and with her technique she can ult on her first turn. Being 120 speed with her speed buff benefiting allies and not herself means she will drop down in action order and thus her ultimate will tick down after 3 whole DPS worth of turns. You will then have a slow raw Mei, which means no buff on your first turn of the second wave though, so it's a compromise and I don't think it's worth it. Onto Lycones. She only really can choose between her signature, Memories of the Past and Cogs S5. Let's talk about her signature. First you get a flat 60% break effect which is higher than what Memories of the Past gives at S5. Then upon ulting, a team-wide 3 turn 24% damage buff, which is pretty decent, having a 3 out of 4 turn uptime for Ruan Mei, with perma uptime if you can drop to a 3 turn rotation with her signature. During the ultimate, if the wearer has above 150% break effect, which we will be aiming for, then you also gain a skill point. Finally, at the start of each wave, all allies regenerate 10 energy. This energy is kind of weird and not easy to plan around and is more of a nice bonus. The energy is worse than Cogs and won't let you 3 turn ult, needing 2 waves to reach this. It is however very good for utility in general, makes her fully skill point positive, grants easy build access and is just very comfy for the team. Memories of the past S5 would be on par with it, allowing for a shortened rotation but less damage percent and team utility. Cogs is there if you have amazing break effect investment but don't have S5 memories. It might even be worth out losing on the guaranteed 3 turn ult from S5 Cogs if you really need the break effect stats from a lower super imposition memories. Royal Mace Signature could be used on other harmonies but requires like 16 subs of break effect for that skill point and Cogs is always going to be better for energy for those harmonies. So speaking of energy, let's see those rotations before pros and cons. Without Cogs or memories you'll have a 4 turn rotation with any light cone with an energy rope. To achieve a 3 turn rotation with her signature, you'd need S5 of her signature and a new wave, or S1 and 2 new waves, which is very hard to achieve, and there aren't even 2 bonus waves in Memory of Chaos. On a 4 turn rotation, you adopt a skill basic basic rotation constantly, like Huo Huo and Fu Xuan. For the 3 turn rotation, it works just like Ting Yun, and you'll go Cogs or Memories S5, skill basic basic with an energy rope and a 5% energy planar set which is Penaconi or Von Wack. Onto pros and cons. For pros, we have our biggest team wide damage buffs. For two DPS comps, she reigns supreme, and even for a singular hyper carry, her power is immense. Only Bronya can possibly beat her in two DPS. We also have buffs being based on her own turns. Her skill will be up permanently, but that ultimate can be abused by extra turns and action advances. It's such a good pro that I'll repeat it by saying DPS that can't abuse the one turn buffs of Bronya, 3e6, will love Ruan Mei as you get the full damage percent power minus the action advance. Solo damage is another pro, she hits very hard despite being a harmony that also buffs your team like crazy. You'll be surprised how many times enemies just explode and disappear upon being broken. We also have unique mechanics, the delay from her ultimate marks is completely unique to her kit and will allow for some great things for dot teams as well as no sustained teams. Weakness break efficiency is an awesome buff to have too and at 50% will help immensely. Finally, her technique makes simulated universe runs a blast in terms of fun and speed. For cons, we have her kill or energy credit stealing. It may benefit her if you can abuse it and get 3 turn ults without cogs or memories, but in autoplay and in general, it's not consistent at all. And losing energy on your DPS is a bit of a shame, and the anti-synergy with on-kill effects sucks. 
We also have anti synergy with debuffs. If they can keep the uptime, it's great, but there are some debuffers, like Pella and Silverwolf, who against fast enemies won't be able to keep 100% debuff uptime. The only way Silverwolf can keep her normal uptime, even with Tutorial Light Cone, is to break the enemy herself on a break build. Rome might also have a problem where her delay overshadows her break efficiency for DPS that want to break consistently, like Himiko and Shui Yi. For squishy enemies it's whatever, but for bosses this hurts those DPSs. I don't really find other cons though, she is kinda amazing apart from these slight issues. So on to synergies. She synergizes with every dual DPS setup in the game and should be the best in slot buffer in most of them, with Bronya being best otherwise. This can be Jinyuan Topaz, Jing Liu Blade, Himiko Hata, a Quantum DPS and Shui Yi, Kafka and Dot sub DPS. There are so many new possibilities with her and the team buffing by so much. Here are some team simulations done by the amazing Hunter Ki, where Ruan Mei outshines other supports in dual DPS setups, like where she's an insane upgrade to Asta in dual Dot, and even an upgrade to Triple Dot over that third Dot unit, whilst not being as hard to pilot or squishy since Triple Dot is very easy to die with with most sustain. She will upgrade the team and make it safer with her delays. Her damage percent is amazing for Dot teams since they stack so much attack percent already and her innate speed and res pen buffs are perfectly designed for their kits that scale on detonations and those that have great break damage as well. The ultimate delays aren't even a problem, they're a bonus as they will proc the Dot and then delay for effectively more Dot procs overall. Ruame even beats E6 S5 Pala in a Jing Liu hyper carry setup as a hyper carry buffer rather than being a dual buffer. Yes, Pala brings Ice Res and Death Shred, but Pala's ultimate is equal to the power of Ruame's ultimate without the additional 68% damage, self damage, break damage procs, and more. Ruame and Pala together could work, except Pala would need to be on tutorial if she doesn't want to lose Death Shred uptime, and I think this team would have too many skill points, so opt for Bronya if you have her. We can also see an instance in Jing Yuan teams where Ruan Mei can even beat out Bronya for Jing Yuan, overshadowing the bonus actions from Bronya, as her 68% damage buff actually works on Lightning Lawn's attacks, unlike Bronya's skills damage buff pre E6. You also have the possibility of running a no sustain team with Welt, Asta, and Ruan Mei, at least it worked somewhat for me, but it could run into issues in late MOC. The combined speed buffs of Asta and Ruan Mei, their damage boosting capabilities, and the Imprison plus the delays of Ruan Mei leaves enemies back in the prehistoric ages. Without Welt, and instead with a dual DPS setup with high toughness damage, you might even get away with no sustain in the same way, providing so much damage in that extended period of time that the enemies can't get up. Shui Yi is a brand new 4 star with a guide out anytime now for me, but I find the high damage percent not great for her since she's already hitting 200% damage easily on abilities. Furthermore, it might need more time to cook, but whilst the weakness break efficiency does translate to more stacks, the high break effect entangled delay with Ruan Mei's own delay means it's hard for enemies to get their toughness back up, and therefore Shui Yi will be wasting her next turn. More on that in the Shui Yi guide. Units that want enemies to have their weakness broken, like Su Shang, work great with Ruan Mei and can get enemies to that broken state much easier. Ruan Mei does finally have an anti synergy with Zila due to the kill stealing sometimes, but maybe that will be changed and she has a slight anti synergy with offensive debuffers, particularly ones that debuff on ultimates. More teams will come in a secondary video if I have time for it, but with these calculations and team ideas and the fact that she can really work with nearly anyone, I hope you can find some awesome teams to let me know below in the comments. Thanks to my amazing YouTube members, thanks for watching and have a go day.